but all of a sudden you've ended this protest just when it started to get a little bit chilly and uncomfortable out there? Or am I being um, cynical? I think you're being cynical and you know you are. <laughs> um, the Extinction Rebellion um, had a massive uh, people's assembly in uh, Marble Arch um, two days ago and made the decision that they would wind it down and have a formal closing ceremony yesterday afternoon after an extraordinary 10 days where we put the global crisis of ecocide and climate breakdown at the heart of the political and media agenda. It's a really important event. But why ever stop? Pardon? Why ever stop? Um, the, this is our third phase. Um, we are a group of volunteers. Obviously, it takes a massive amount of energy and effort to stage um, a protest like we have in the last 10 days. It's been unprecedented, as the the, uh, the head of the London police has said. No, never before in modern European history, Europe, British history has a thousand people volunteered peacefully to be protested to put the crisis that are facing Britain at the heart of the political agenda. But isn't the issue, Donica, that this protest was actually just filled with so many hypocritical actions? So, for example, the London Air Quality mm. Network reported that the gridlock caused by the protest actually resulted in massive spikes of toxic traffic emissions during every morning rush hour during the protest. I have no idea where you go with those figures. The the figures and, and the, the studies done by by King's Hospital University, which is a specialist in air pollution, showed that pollution was down 45% on Oxford Street. Well, Dr Prashant Kumar, who is a professor of air quality and health at the University of Surrey, basing, based his comments on the London Air Quality Network, and he said when vehicles are idling or stopping, they give off higher emissions than free-flowing traffic, and that's what caused the spike, all down to your protest. The, well, to be frank with you, the, the stats by King's Hospital London, rather than a professor in Southwark, stated the opposite. The pollution, traffic and congestion were extraordinarily peaceful on Oxford Street. And, but let's not, let's not get distracted. These are, these are minor issues when we're well, talking about... I extinction. know they are, but do you not think the hypocrisy is, 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 is something that should be focused on here? Because, for example, why on Sorry, earth... Why, why, why on earth... Should we talk about hypocrisy when we're talking about the future of Britain being extinct and humanity facing extinction? When the UN General Secretary states that unless Britain and the world radically cuts our emissions within 18 months, humanity is facing extinction. And you want to talk about hypocrisy? Well, I Jeez. do. I do. Because... Well, don't you think because... That's, that's like that, it doesn't, well, why do you think as a human being and as a fellow citizen of our country, can you not talk about the issues... Why are you not talking about why the government? Because I think you have. Emissions? Because I think you have done a total bad representation of the UK, which is vastly ahead of the Western world when it comes to action on climate change. And the statistics back that up. You look at the carbon dioxide emissions per capita, the UK, 5.99, the US, 15.53. So why are you targeting the UK when it's China, when it's America, when it's India and the rest of the world that actually are the people that aren't taking action on climate change, Donica? Um, please, rather than actually uh, shouting at me... I'm asking you a question. About, no, you're shouting me a question at me, but let's take the question. United Kingdom historically has one of the world's largest emissions of carbon emissions. Secondly, the United Kingdom's carbon emissions are only down around 10% since 1990, not down the 50% that the government claims. Why? Because the government only counts territorial emissions. It doesn't count aviation, it doesn't count shipping, and it doesn't count imported goods from China and India. If we take those account, the government's figures are pretty woeful. And finally, surely you think integrity is important. If Britain is going to say to the world, we all need to cut our carbon emissions down to less than one ton per person, we must put our own house in order. And Britain is one of the largest centres of the financing of the global fossil fuel industry, one of the largest centres of the, of the oil corporations. And finally, our government is promoting fossil fuels across the planet. Britain has a massive duty to lead by example. The problem is, if you were going to preach to members of the British public, wanting them to get on board with your message, you have to be practising that your behavior, you have to be proving and showing that your behavior is whiter than white. And so okay. I want to put to you, I want to put to you a story uh, that was published today, uh, where you were accused of rank hypocrisy, your organization, for ordering flowers 
that were flown 5,290 miles from Colombia for a PR stunt. So you wanted 650 white roses to hand out to MPs at Parliament. You decided to use exported flowers from Colombia when the florist offered you home-grown flowers. Why would your organisation make a decision like that? I, have, I personally have no knowledge about that, but if you want to talk about, about what, what my, my story is, my house in 1998 became the first house to sell electricity to the grid. I produce three times more solar electricity a year than, than actually I use in my own house. My gas bill is less than £10. I've not flown for a holiday for 10, 15 years. I've never owned a car. I produce, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. Almost all my food is organic. I have seen so many people like this on the front lines volunteering to be arrested who actually are trying their best to live um, as, as we believe we well, do. good on you, because crazy. you've practised what you preach. But what about all of those champagne socialist hypocrites that are part of your group? Chief among them, Emma Thompson. So she flew 5,456 miles, we believe, in business class in order to get to the protest. Now, do you know that that would actually run up a three-tonne carbon footprint? Whereas I believe that your group, tell me if I'm wrong, but the, but the Extinction Rebellion group are actually encouraging no uh, air travel unless it's urgent. I think it's really good you've brought up aviation. I understand that um, Emma Thompson was flying home from her workplace in, in New York, sorry, in, in Los Angeles. Yes. But what you're, what you're absolutely right about is that we have to tackle aviation because aviation is a massive carbon footprint for people who do so. And, and that's why I personally haven't flown for 15 years for holidays. I don't, I don't believe it's right. And I would encourage Emma Thompson to do that. However, So she is a hypocrite? Hypocrisy. No, well, well, she she is a person who was flying home anyway. So should she have not? Should she stay in in Los Why doesn't she? Why doesn't she? Well, why doesn't she work here if she cares that much about her carbon footprint? And, and what I, she I, said I, is I, because she's rich, she can offset it. But I think that's a terrible message, isn't it? If you're saying because you're but, rich, you're able to it, fly. It, do, do do you care about these issues? Do you know do you what? Of about, course do I do. Emissions? Of well, course good. I do. So I care about ground. climate change, but I think that like the British government is doing and has done for many years, it always has to be balanced with what the rest of the world is doing to ensure that our people are not put in a worse economic position. And I also believe, Donica, it's absolutely tragic that you are encouraging people not to go and see the world. You know, I'm from New Zealand. I fly around the world all the time. And, 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 I, and I have absolutely no regrets and no guilt about that because I believe that we should all go and see the world. Well, then that's... Then I'm sure you and don't air travel is part of it. And you don't care Well, then neither does Emma Thompson, neither does well, okay. Leonardo DiCaprio, neither okay. does any of I these would, liberal would, would, lovies who get yeah. on flights all the time. OK, so I, I asked you, did you care? And you asked to talk about hypocrisy. Let's talk about the British government. The British government has said that they actually hear our message. And you want to talk about hypocrisy. The British government, l- let me finish. The British government is pouring billions into expanding airports. The British government is pouring billions into, into expanding motorways. The British government has ta- imposed a new tax on renewable energy. The British government has reduced taxation on fossil fuels. The British government is subsidising fracking and subsidising North Sea oil. Is subsidising third world expansion of oil fields. And the UN General Secretary says we have one and a half years to save ourselves. What are we supposed to do? Well, Donica, I've listened to your point, but let me put it to you that you and your organisation, the Extinction Rebellion, you are extremists and you are going to lose the support of the British public because you have just said that they are all hypocrites and cannot support climate change if they get on a flight. And I put it to you that the vast majority of the British public want to continue to fly Hypocrites like Emma Thompson will continue to fly. So I think you are an extreme organisation okay. and you will lose the support of the Hang public. On. So do you, do you believe, do you know that since I'm 60 years old, when I, since I was born, 60% of nature has been destroyed. At the moment, at the rate we're going, 1% will be destroyed every year. So by the time I die, maybe 90% of nature will be destroyed. Do you think it's extreme? to say that we shouldn't do that? Do you think it's extreme to say we should do that? I would argue you are the extremist in this conversation. I think it's really sad.